Amen. But um, this topic is one that I think, um, I don't know, I think I probably studied it. There's two topics I've studied a lot. One, one is emotional intelligence. I think you've, you've all heard of that before, correct? Emotional intelligence by Dr. James Goldman, uh, Dr. Um, uh, Daniel Goldman. I've studied that a lot. Um, I've studied uh, growth mindset. You're going to hear that in this session today, quite a bit. And and um, and this what I'm about to share with you now. I've studied. So what I really want you to walk away with, and Dominic, I know you're just coming on with us first time. I'm I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good combination between motivation and strategy because. I think you need both. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's not just one or the other. You need both. And so um, today's topic, when I first, this is really a byproduct of a book I read uh, by a guy named James Clear. And the book is entitled Atomic Habits. So you're going to actually see some of the content from that book in this presentation with a little bit of my own spin and mix and things that I'm dropping in here that he didn't share in his book. You know, and so um, I um, when I tapped into this insight about two years ago, it literally I don't want to say it changed my life, but it definitely changed my perspective on doing things in a structured way. Uh, my style is a little bit what you call demonstrative and a demonstrative person. We're energetic, but sometimes with a demonstrative person, you need to make sure you have structure. And so. This is about structure and systems that produce success. And so that's what this class today is going to be talking about. So let me kind of get these slides up here. And please take notes. And, um, and my hope is that today you're going to walk away with some information that won't just be advantageous to you, um, but it will be advantageous to um, uh, your peers, if you, or, or your or your or your clients, if you have a chance to you know interact with them and share some of this with them, if that's you know. And I'm sorry, I'm having a little bit of a problem with this slide deck. Let me get it back together here. Okay, all right, here we go. All right, let me do this. Hey, Stephanie, good. She's on. There. Good morning. How are you, my friend? Let me see. Let me share. So this is going to be a good one. So get ready to take some notes. And I, I'm, I've always, you know, said go back and share with other people. This one, I hope you do share. It could be something, you know, you all send these videos over to Lucia. So you have them. This may be even one you want to sit down with your teams and share with them because um, we've heard this term before. And I know I personally have shared it with your clients, like different clients over the, because I've had a chance to work with the clients too, uh, through Past Stone. But we want to talk about developing habits of success. And it's important to understand that term because the operative word in this statement is developing. You know what I mean? And um, I apologize if there's any background noise. My headphones aren't working and I'm in a kind of a shared location. So you may hear a little bit of background noise. And I apologize for that in advance. But Developing. Let me ask you a question just to kind of get the ball rolling. What does it mean to develop something? It could be anyone. And this is not a test. <laughs> it's not pass fail. It's just conversation. What does it mean to develop something? Anyone? To create, to apply some effort and create. Yeah, put some effort and create. It kind of, and it's something you think about these words, Stephanie, like create. Create means like I got to do something, <laughs> you know. Make something happen. What's that? Make something happen. Yeah, I, I got to make it happen. You know, um, when I was a kid, just to tell you, I don't want you, I don't want you to think that coach is always the most motivated person in the world, because I have been welcome to any new new people that are coming. I see a few more are coming on. But I haven't always been optimistic. <laughs> I know you're going to find it hard to believe, but when I was a little boy, I was extremely pessimistic. You know, and I'm fortunate that I had a wonderful mother who did not allow that. She didn't allow me to be pessimistic. 
So one word I used to say all the time, all the time, is, um, again, thank you for coming on. Uh, we got, got you there from Chester County, okay. Um, is that I would say I can't. I used to say I can't to everything, you know, and my mother, and for those of you, maybe we all may want to put, I don't know if we all know each other, so we may want to put in the chat feature who we are and where we're from because there's a few new folks on. So you may know each other. If you don't, that's cool. If you do, you don't have to do it. But if you don't, just so people can not know you, who you are. And so, and as you're coming on, if you can put your, um, uh, uh, your system in mute, that'd be great. So we don't, we don't hear the background noise. But my mother used to always say this, and I love her for it. God bless her soul, man. I lost her last year, and I'm still in pain over that. But she used to always say, look me in the eye, son. I say, yes, ma'am. Say I can. <laughs> but mom, you don't understand. I can't. I can. But you, I can. I don't care about anything you're thinking right now. You tell me you can. And I'll sit there, and i slump my head like this and say, I can. <laughs> <laughs> my mother never allowed me to say I can't. And I'm so grateful because guess what she was doing, my friends? Guess what she was doing? She was helping me, all right, develop a pattern of thinking that led me to be the man I am, I am today. Does that make sense? If you understand what I'm saying, like you can pop in the chat feature, I get what you're saying. I get it, coach. Because that's what she was doing. In my young mind, I thought I can't. You no, know, things would come. I can't do well in school, or I can't do well in sports, or I can't, you know. And um, and mom said you can't. So I'm using myself as an example, okay? An, an example of what happens when you start to develop patterns in your thinking. Please write that down. Patterns in your thinking. Because my friends, we're all driven by these patterns. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come out of off of this for just a moment. We're all driven by these patterns. Anybody want to take a shot at? And again, this is this is all us just interact interacting with each other. So we're not here to judge. We're not here to anything. We're here to support and encourage this team that we have here today. It's good to see so many of you on board. But what is it? When I say pattern of thinking, what am I saying? Somebody talk to me. What does that sound like? All right. This is not school. It's not like a school where you put your hand up and you got to get, get, get the teacher going to look at you. <laughs> Talk to me. What does that sound like to you, Debbie? Sorry for putting you on the spot. <laughs> to improvise. Yeah, to improvise. Change okay. your thinking. Yeah, and your thinking. Okay. All right. Um, I got a small wood here. If you're on, I'm just, I'm just going to. Try to pick a few people because I don't see I don't know really see any first names or anything. But do you did you just hear what I said about patterns of thinking? And what are your thoughts on that? Or anyone? It's just a conversation. What about you, Dominic? I'll pick on you, man. <laughs> um you said patterns of conversations. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pat patterns of thinking. Yep. Patterns of thinking. What we have developed patterns over a lifetime of thinking certain ways. What is that to you? When you hear that, what do you mean? What does it sound like? Uh, for me personally, like one thing I always like, every time I make a decision, I always weigh in the options and I always yeah. look further ahead. That's yes. that's one thing I'm handling. Yep. Everything from really like picking, like even career wise, I always look at like why I join like anything. I just see like what's the long term goal. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Do you do? Would you say that you're naturally wired to do that, or you had to create that? No, I'm naturally wired. It's it's something I think I think all that about all the time. I just look at it like yeah, yeah, like everything I do. It's just kind of I always think of like all right, what's the long term? Like if I do this for how long? What's what? What are the benefits? What are the pros and cons down the road? Mm -hmm. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, so I'm not very, and that's yeah. Believe me, my girlfriend complains about that. I'm not very in the moment. I just think distantly, and she complains about it all this time. I mean, she's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's funny. My wife is the same way, and we go back and forth too because she's like that man. She is. 
And some people have, and your mindsets are more on the analytical side. You know what I mean? And that means you're going to look at systems and processes different than other people. You know, but sometimes we can do it in some categories and in others, others we don't, you know. And so what I'm looking at today is how do we make this a lifestyle where we can look at the way we do things and process how we can be better at it, or more efficient at it by creating new patterns in our thinking. OK, so it's good. Like some, some people could be really good at like building a widget, but terrible at taking care of themselves. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? mean? My friend's a financial advisor and he's the same way too. And he tells me all the time, he's just like, oh, you should have majored in econ economics yeah. because you would have been, you would have killed it because that's everything they do is they always have to weigh in the factor of every decision of how it affects everything. Yep. Yeah. My wife was an, was an engineer and she worked at a nuclear firm. Matter of fact, she was in Pennsylvania. She worked at um, Limerick. If any of you are familiar oh, with yeah. Limerick, she worked at Limerick. And believe me, she had to be analytical because if not, that, 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 that's cooling tower out there. <laughs> <laughs> would have been all over the place. That was her job, yeah. you know? So, you know, so she's naturally, she, she's not there anymore, but she was there years ago. So, so, so what you're saying is patterns. And I'm going to, we're going to jump right into this. I want to share some things with you. And um, so just for those, you know, um, just kind of a few things I always ask, you know, turn, commit to gauging, turn on, turn your cameras on if you would like it. If not, that's fine. I'm okay with that. And silence your phones and keep things kind of distraction free. I'm Daryl Andrews, coach D. I'm a consultant, coach, motivator, and author. Uh, I've been doing this work, as many in Chester County know, for years. I've been working with Chester County probably off and on for 10 years now. So it's been a while. We started working with the clients, and then we started doing things with the staff. So honored to be a part of the team. This is one of the books that I'm authoring called The Self-Care Movement. And I promise myself all the time, one day, maybe this book going to get done. <laughs> Not quite there yet, but hopefully it'll get done soon. All right. And uh, and love what I do. I, I'm very passionate about this work, very committed, and been involved with workforce development for 22 years. As I mentioned before, I shared with Dominic, I was a contractor over Delaware County, Pennsylvania, and also in uh, in Del the state of Delaware, where we had a contract to run youth uh, and adult uh, job readiness initiatives. So, so we're gonna give you some information. We're gonna give you some process, and hopefully a little inspiration. That's kind of the goal for today. We'll go about an hour and 15 minutes and we'll be done. So what is a habit? What impact do they have on us, positively or negatively in the workplace? So what is a habit? And what, what, what impact do they have on us, positively or negatively in the workplace? I'll come off of that for now. Somebody just, anyone. What is a habit, first of all? Even if we don't talk about the workplace, what is a habit? Anybody want to just take a shot at what is it from your perspective? What is a habit? Lucia, <laughs> I'm messing with her now. I don't know if she's available. She may be, um, you know, she coordinates these, so I'm not sure if she's. Uh, no, a habit is something you just do repeatedly. Repeatedly, yeah. Okay. And all sometimes right. it's hard to break a habit. <laughs> we all have that struggle. There's no doubt about that. Yeah. Is, is it Golson? G-U-L-S-E-N. -E I don't want to mess up names. I'm terrible. I don't want to do that. What are your thoughts? I'm trying to just get everybody a little engaged here. Or you can pop it in the chat feature if you like. Because I know not everybody likes to be, you know, in the spotlight. Okay, doing something, okay, repetitive, doing something often. So you're popping them in the chat feature too. Okay, good, yeah. Yeah, and, and let me tell you something, friends. And please take this as a note. This is for all of us. Um, we're, we're, we're pretty much... The majority of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis is driven by habits. It's the way we do things, you know, and I'll be honest with you, the way we do things right or wrong, <laughs> right or wrong. And so we want to dive into this because I want you to understand you got good habits too. And sometimes we may want to accentuate the good habits and work on eliminating the bad. Does that make sense? So we don't want to make it look like all habits are bad habits. Some people have really good habits. Some of us do. But it's those bad habits that have a tendency to keep us stuck in a mode of doing things a certain way. It can limit, limit our ability, all right, to progress. All right, so let me go on to dive into this 
there. Today, we're going to talk about some general stuff. And then next, our next session, we're going to go into a real good uh, strategy that James Clear uses to be able to move, move away from some of these habits. All right. So let's take a look at this. You know, habits are the pathways we create in our minds via reputation. There you go. You just got an A on the test, Lucia. <laughs> there it is. It causes our minds to, to think the way we do things is right. This is what's crazy about it. Even if it's wrong, our mind has accepted it as right because we've done it so much. <laughs> because our minds, I tell folks all the time, our minds are a, uh, this one guy said, I interviewed this one guy. And what did he call it? Uh, oh, this, this is such a powerful statement. Write this down because this is really good when he said it. It's a pattern recognition machine. Please write that down. I'll type it in the chat feature too. He said, I, this is a guy I just interviewed for my podcast. I have a podcast called the Motive Action Podcast. I did a, he called it a, I, I never heard that before. I thought that was so powerful. Called, I can't spell. A pattern recognition machine. And so what he's saying, that he was saying is, our, our mind a lot of times responds to patterns. Yep. You know, and so so the patterns that we establish, the minds accept as normal. That's why people may have bad habits they can't kick, because once we 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 start doing it, the way our minds are wired, is it, our minds, believe it or not, it's not more our minds a lot of times it's not as much output as input. Like it's what we put into it that it accepts as normal. It doesn't really know much of the difference between normal and abnormal. It takes what we give it. <laughs> because if you think about it, some of our bad habits, if it, if it had the ability to recognize it as a bad habit, it would shut us down and say, you're not doing that. <laughs> it would say, you're not going to do that. Because no, I'm not going to let you do that. I'm not going to let you do this. I'm not going to let you do that. Now our bodies will respond and tell us, I don't want you to do that. You know, especially if there's habits that are detrimental to our health. Our bodies will say, okay, I'm going to give you some indication that this ain't right. <laughs> but your minds don't know. Your minds say, oh, well, you're doing it. I guess it's normal. And so what we're going to talk about today is how we, how do we, how do we get in there and, and start trying to make some adjustments? So again, this is, this is, this, this is a, a statement here. And that is the mindset once established drives our behaviors, actions, and belief. Our ability to grow is often stifled by habits we have formed. See, notice that picture over there, it's all the right way. Because that's the patterns that we've established. It's all the right way. Like I mentioned when I was younger, I used to say, I can't all the time. I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. And my mom said, you can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. I can't. Now I don't say I can't anymore. I always say I can because guy, why that pattern <laughs> was broken. I'm so grateful for having a mother to recognize that. And now for me, even though sometimes I'm going to feel like I can't because <laughs> you get frustrated or angry or something, like, I, still, I want to say I can't right now. I won't be that kid again <laughs> and go back. But my mind takes me over to I can because it's accepted that is the right way. So to shift our habits, we need to create a growth mindset. So some of you, some of you have seen this before because I know I've talked about it quite a bit in my trainings, you know, but it's, this is the book that was written by Dr. Dweck. It says, you know, the term growth mindset was originally coined by Dr. DeWitt, a psychologist, professor, and researcher at, um, at Stanford University. In her 2000 book, Mindset, The New Psychology of Success, a person demonstrates a growth mindset, uh, uh, DeWitt explains, when they believe they're not limited by inherent traits or abilities, instead they have the capacity to learn, grow, and improve. All right. And Tracy, I think you had your hand up. I do. So... Within this realm of habit, when we do what we think is the right thing over and over and over and over again, mm -hmm. we're getting the same results. We're wondering why we're stuck. Mm -hmm. We're wondering why there's no forward movement. And it's because we haven't come to the realization yet that something needs to change. Yep. And there's many reasons it might be our values and beliefs are so ingrained in us that we just simply can't fathom mm -hmm. to look at things a different way. Yeah. 
maybe we can't believe that it won't get better. There, there's so many, and I know I'm going deep, but okay. to mm -hmm. simply say the word habit, yeah, it, it just, it's such a fabric of our lives that sometimes we get caught up in that minutia. Yeah, yeah. And everything you said is is right there. It, it it's, it's interesting because we just have a tendency as human beings, just all of us, Daryl, Coach DeAndrews included. I'm not sitting here acting like I'm the sage on the stage. Lord knows I got stuff I always have to work on. But we create this stuff in our minds. This is the difference between what I'm saying about creating and with this creation. We create this stuff unconsciously. We just see it as the normal flow of doing things and we do it so much it becomes this habit that we just created this pattern. Like a lot of times when I coach people, one of the most difficult parts of coaching is getting people to see things differently because we've been so programmed to seeing things a certain way. So you're absolutely right. And and, and, and we're going to give you something here in a moment that's going to lend itself to what you're talking about. So the big thing we want to walk away from here is that we can't say I don't have the ability to do certain things. Now, let me clarify that. We're not all going to be rocket scientists. We're not all going to be brain surgeons. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about general day-to-day -day patterns in our work and in our lives. I remember when I started my workforce program in, 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 in uh, Chester. And a lot of people there had been dealing with some stuff and challenges in that town and and, um, and we had clients that were coming in that had multiple barriers to success and employment. And so I, I had a small staff when we started, grew a little bit, but I had about six, seven people on the team. And I set them down and I said this to them. I said, let me explain something to you. We're not going to be surprised by anything we see. And he looked at me like, I said, no, we're not surprised. Listen, we have chosen to work in a field where people have some challenges. Our job is to try to help them see through that, those challenges to a new pathway through, relating to employment and life. If we get caught up in what we see, we can't help them to see something new because we're seeing what they're seeing and we're supporting that <laughs> through our behavior, through our actions, through the way we communicate to them and everything. So what we're going to do is we're going to reframe situations. So as people walk through our doors with different barriers and all of that, we're going to see the potential in these folks, not the problem. Because what will happen is now, how do we help them move the needle if we're right there with them? You see, what I was doing with my team was trying to create a pattern of how we get clients to rethink things through the examples that we establish. And so what happened is that program, um, that was years ago, you know, um, it was, you know, under WIA, along with our youth program, went on to have great success. And I mean by great success, based upon placements and retention uh, with the youth who was graduating and things like that. And also when we put them in the summer programs, retaining those summer work, work I think, the first year we lost, we had about three or four kids. But then after that, none of our youth, all, they all stayed on their, they all stayed on their, their work. They didn't, we, they retained these young people, you know. But a lot of it was the mindset we had when they walked through that door. And, and so what I'm saying is that like other, I'm not trying to compare or contrast, but other programs, we would get together for our meetings and there's just so much pessimism. I'm like, how could you do this work thinking like that? You got to, you kind of, you kind of see, this is we're here knowing that folks are coming in with barriers to a point, barriers to life. And we expect something different. <laughs> we expect it, you know, they, they have barriers. And I said, so our job is to help them see through. Now, were we able to win everyone? Nah, I'm not saying that, but guess what? We won a lot of them. Because it starts with thinking. And so in, or from an organizational perspective, it's important to understand the collective paradigm we have is important. Because the, a lot of times in uh, with, with, with our work, they're interacting with a lot of people. So this mindset piece is important. I'm not here to just teach on that. So the big thing is why, because the way we uh, the way to analyze mindsets is a uh, mindset is to analyze why I think the way I do in the first place. Mindset is the driving force behind disagreements and or synergy. 
Individual habits collectively drive organizational outcomes. So, so this is a whole nother message, but then you have these core values that we say we want to ascribe to. And those core values in many ways should be the driving force for how we interact with each other. That's just talking about clients, each other. If it's if it's respect for others, if it's um, what else? Uh, integrity. All those things are important because here's the deal. We're the team that has to help make the change with the folks. So we should be operating in a mode mindset wise where we're trying to strengthen that team to do the work. Now this is Coach D, the consulting coming up. <laughs> because I not only speak to your pro programs, I consult the programs. And what I'm saying is this, we got to create that synergy around the habits that we have with our, this is important, with our internal customers and with our external customers. And so these habits start to create a culture, all right, that kind of lends itself to what this little thing here is saying. You know, values, what we believe, that's the core values, mindsets, what we think, which leads to, look at that, the behaviors, what we do. So we got to find a way to merge those things and our habits can help us do that, okay? And so, so moving forward, we're going to talk about what's called Atomic Habits. That's a good book. I would encourage you. I think some, last one time I talked about, it, I think a few people said they saw the book, they read the book. So please take a look at that, all right? And uh, Tracy, here we go with, when you say habits. This is where we're about to get rid of rubber meet the road. Um. We will focus on atomic habits. Atomic ha habits are those tiny, please write that word down, tiny habits. That's what it is. It's tiny habits. We're not talking about big habits. We're talking about tiny habits. This has been the problem, Tracy, talking to you, my friend, with habits. People talk about habits, and you know what they say, Dominic? You got to break those habits, <laughs> right? But you're like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it was that easy? We all would do it. <laughs> it's like, hey, let's all go and win a million dollars in the lottery, you know? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I got to stay, I got it. Yep, thank you, Stephanie. And so what we're going to be talking about, I want you to get this as neurological pathways. Please write that down. Neurological pathways. We're going to go a little deeper into it than this habit style. We're going to talk about neurological pathways. And a neurological pathway is a pathway created in our minds via habits. Now, I'm going to explain that to you. All right? Anyone in here got a little medical background at all that knows about neurology? Anybody? Any insights on neurology? No one? Okay. What does it sound like? I guess I want to be careful because I don't want to sound like I'm lecturing here. What does it sound like when you say neurological pathways? Anybody want to take a shot at that? I'm kind of more of a brain um, psychology. Like, you know, yeah. kind of always thinks when you talk about people with like certain uh, dopamine receptors and reward, pleasure, and all that. Like what, like, yeah, that's what. I... Yeah, that's good. Excellent. Thank you, Dominic. Anyone else? Like I said, for those who are just coming on, I'm like family to y'all. You can see we're just talking about this. Yeah. Anybody else want to share uh, some thoughts about it? And, and let me tell you why this is important. And thank you, Dominic, for your input. Um, this is important because we don't um, we don't realize, uh, realize that yeah we we have these neurological. I got another message. Thank you. We got these neurological pathways that we've carved through habits. So you said it right, it's in our minds. It's our, it's our mindset. And so our minds create these patterns. Have any of you, I'm gonna give myself away, I'm a little bit of a camping guy. Anybody ever go camping before? <laughs> no, oh man, you're missing out on life if you don't go camping, that's fun. <laughs> out there in the woods with the ticks and the fleas. And it's funny, we used to go to little local, local, local parks, yeah, yeah. Thank you. And we, 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 we used to go to little local parks and camp with my kids. And I used to tell my kids, oh, God, we got to watch out for the bears. I get them all scared. Well, there was not a bear within 50 miles, 100 miles where we were. <laughs> I was at night, you got to watch out for those bears. But a lot of the places we would camp, there was a pathway to get to where we were going to camp. And so we had to park our car 
and walk through the different locations to go through these pathways to get to the camping site. Now, on the right of us, left and the right, there were trees, there were woods, there were weeds, but the pathway took us to a destination. And as long as we stayed on that pathway, we got there. So when you say neurological pathway, it's habits that have been created that keep taking us back to a certain destination. Does that make sense? <laughs> Yeah, one thing I come, I used to work in special ed, and the one thing mm -hmm. I always heard through trainings, and I don't know if this is leading you, is that the the marshmallow study, mm -hmm. where they had the, uh, us about that. the the kids, they did a test of like who, who, a group of kids and who would be more successful in life. It's the kids that instantly ate the marshmallow, because if you ate, they ate it, or the one, like, because there's kids where they give it to them, they eat it right away, and the other, there was a group of kids that just, said, if you waited 10 minutes, we'll give you another one. And the ones that waited down, down the road were the ones that became more successful than the ones that ate it right away. <laughs> so the other ones kind of had a sense of self-control. Is that what that Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so it's the ones that are willing to essentially wait and work, work be able to work harder and to reach the goal, the ones that are looking for. You, you know what you call that, Dominic? You, with that, it's called delayed gratification. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Delayed gratification. That's good. Thanks for sharing that, man. That's really good. Yeah. And see, guess what? Those ones, and this is no fault to the ones who ate fast. That's the way they were wired. You know what I mean? The, it, you know, you can't fault them. That's just how they're wired. You know? And the other ones, be it through training or upbringing or whatever, was able to say, you know, I don't need it right now. You know? And so, again, that's all mindset stuff. So, because, again, these patterns are just there, those patterns. And so we're going to talk a little bit about that and give you some information so we can, you know. Let me pause for a second and see, are there any questions uh, so far? Everybody do one thing for me. If you can go in the chat feature, just tell me what you're hearing. What do you, what, one thing you've learned. I, wanna, I don't want to keep going. I want to make sure you're getting some of this because I'm about to go into some new areas. So talk, type, everybody just take one moment to type in the chat feature what you have learned today. Because my hope between today and the next session, you're going to have this habits thing wired. Because we're going to give you some clear-cut information that's going to help with it. All right, just in the chat feature, what is the one thing you've learned? I want to make sure you're getting this. Because like, like, like Dominic said earlier, a lot of us go through these trainings and... I want to make sure it's not just training, it's application, all right? It was a 45-90-day program. Yeah, I thought, they, they probably didn't know that. They're going to... Hello? I want to make sure you're... Same. Is he... Jessica. Hey, Jessica. All right. So one thing, uh, this one thing in the chat feature that you've learned so far, those you've been on. I was told by Judge and... Uh... This one thing you learn about habits. All right. If you, you're, I don't know if you're on phones or not, but if you can, one thing. Okay. Tiny habits. Yeah. Neurological patterns. Yep. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Yep. Absolutely. Get a few more. All right. Because these tiny habits is what we're going to be diving into here in a few moments. Yep. Neurological pattern, the way that people think. Good. 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 Okay. All right, so I'm sure a few more of you will have something to pop in there. No, hold on a second, let me see here. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Recognize the patterns, behavior, yeah, pa rec recognizing pattern behaviors, even if they're tiny or big. Good, very good. Thank you for that. Appreciate that. All right. Okay, some far I learned some habits are from how we were wired and taught. Love that. Thank you so much. Appreciate your feedback, y'all. Yeah. All right, so keep that neurological pathway thing in mind. Because what we want to do is this, and this is this is the hope over the next few days. We're going to learn how to carve new patterns, new pathways. Because just like we carve those other pathways, we can carve new ones through tiny habits, little things that we do. Okay, and so we're gonna talk about small habits. We're gonna talk about focus on systems, 
And we're going to talk about identity base. All right. Identity based habits are powerful. I'm going to talk about that in just a, that's going to, that's going to be our conclusion for today. But the first thing we're going to talk about is small habits. Now, this is interesting. Make a 1% improvement in your current habits. Don't swing for the bat, bat for the home, don't swing the bat for the home run. Go for first base. Okay. All right. Don't swing the bat for home run. <laughs> That's been the problem historically. <laughs> when people teach this stuff, I got joking earlier, you got to get rid of that habit. Get rid of that habit. Well, okay. <laughs> Sounds good. You know, but maybe if I swing and I hit it and go to first base, then maybe I can get to second. Maybe I can get to third. And then maybe I can get to fourth. But, you know, it's rare, as you and I know, to get a home run. In baseball, any baseball fans in here? I mean, if a player hits 50 home runs in a year, they're like considered the greatest of all time, because that's a lot of home runs. But I think in baseball, the average great player only hits about 25. But they have lots of runs batted in. They have a lot of getting on base. They have a lot of that, but very few home runs. So the first thing I want to talk about with small habits is small habits as defined by James Clear is simply, let's make a 1% improvement. Please write that down and let me explain what that means. Okay, in your current habits. Now, does that seem like much, y'all? Does, is that, um, does that seem a little bit like, man, it ain't much. <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't seem like much. But let's look at this next play, and then I'm, I'm going to explain it a little bit more. All right? The difference a tiny improvement can make over time is astounding. You ready for this? Here is how the math works, so you can see the math. If you can get 1% better each day for one year, you end up 30 times better by a better by the time you're done. All right? All right? And so it really is not 1% better for you. It should be per month, each day for the, for, for the year. So it's 30 days a month. All right? You'll end up 30 times. It should be 30 more times of a better. No, actually, this is the math by James Clear. He has a scientific formula. No, it's not me. It's, I just looked at that. It's his formula. And that's what he's saying by the times, you know, by the time you're done. So he he does have a formula for that. And I didn't really put the formula in there. So I apologize for that. When I looked at this, it doesn't read right, but it's it's important. So let me let me um explain what, what the premise is here. So um in sports, what you have is um athletes who are looking to improve. All right, they're looking to improve. So there was a team years ago. Does anybody remember? Um, obviously, we all heard of. You could type in the chat feature or whatever. Heard of Kobe Bryant and all those, and, and and Magic Johnson. If any of you, I'm sure you have. If you're a fan of sports, or even not, just because they're very popular. Anybody heard of them at all? You know, in particular, I want to go back as far as Magic Johnson. Okay, yes, Dev, you've heard of him. Yep, yeah. Magic Johnson, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. That's what like my generation. <laughs> Kareem was a great ball player. Back then, they had Magic Johnson. They had a guy named James Worthy. Thank you for these yeses that are coming through. Thumbs up, y'all. Y'all know who I'm talking about. Okay. Their coach was a coach by the name of Pat Riley. Okay? And this is what he said. He said to the team, this is what I want from you all. And this is, this is really powerful the way he said it. Most teams never improve. They keep operating on the same level of talent that they've always had and they just hardly ever improve. I want everybody on this team to improve by 1%. All right, just 1%. Give me one more rebound, two more points. Block one more shot. That's all. And this is what he said. If we can improve by 
nobody will be able to beat us. <laughs> we'll win championship after championship. And if I think I'm right, I could be wrong. I think they won something like three championships on that. And then Phil Jackson and all of them took over, I think, later. <clears throat> the point I'm making is this. They didn't improve a thousand percent. They didn't improve 20%. He said 1%. So when we talk about tiny habits, it's really important to understand the goal here is to keep working at it. All right. One small, just like 1% of the time. If I have a habit where I don't exercise, you know, I just don't like exercise. I'm never going to do it. 1% improvement would be, okay, I'm going to get up, walk out the door, I'll walk a block, and then I'm going to walk back home. <laughs> and then maybe the next day I get up and walk two blocks and then walk back home. We're not talking about getting up and jogging for 10 miles. We're taking take one small step. Like for me, here's myself as an example. I used to have a pretty bad attitude. Until one of my mentors told me, Daryl, you're never going to accomplish anything in life with that attitude. So you know what I started to do? And this is before I even knew this information. <clears throat> I started to say, okay, my normal response is X, Y, Z. I'm going to work on changing that. And so what I did was I started to reflect on what I shared with people and its impact on me. So I would pause for five seconds before I responded to things because a lot of times my response was negative. And then I started to think, if I say what I'm about to say, what impact is that going to have on this person or even on me? And so I didn't master the art. It took me about a year and a half to master it. But after that, it became, it became pretty clear I can do this. And even to this day, now I can, yeah, somebody said something. I, this will be my response. Why? Because I built a system. They, they say 10 seconds. I, I made it five. Okay. So that's a little bit of work to improve an outcome that makes you a better person, you know? Um, and my team at my workforce site, we had the 10 second rule. I said, I want them to have 10 seconds. So if you're dealing with a client that's let's say having some kind of challenges or before you respond to what they're saying, hear what they're saying, then respond. Because that, 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 that statement in that moment may be from a position of anxiety. <clears throat> or something that just happened, you know? <clears throat> you know, Dominic, when I, when I would, we would work with employers, which that's a big part of your work, I'm sure. We would say to the employers, we're gonna work with you, with the client, to be able to make sure that they can transition into being a really meaningful employer, employee for you. But what we need for you to do is be patient. Give them some time to develop. Give them some time to improve. Maybe look at some type of peer-to-peer -peer mentoring or some type of, but don't, don't draw a conclusion if that person is a little bit off on a given day because, you know, we're working on some things. Because I think what happens a lot of times we paint these pictures and it, and it, and it becomes unrealistic. And then they, as the employer, get discouraged and then draw, draw conclusions instead of us creating a system and a pattern for them to see this person can ultimately become a good employee. We're going to work together to make that happen. You understand what I mean? Because again, I know bird business service, y'all out there trying to, you know, do your part. Just wanted to bring some attention to that. So anyway, um, moving on. One percent. So oh, so I want you to do this for about three or four minutes. I want you to think about a habit that you want would want to work on. And then and then then I'll give you about five minutes. And then what's one one thing, everybody do this. Just to, and if you would like to pop it in the chat feature, if you feel comfortable sharing it, what's one small step you can take to change that habit? You know, like, let's say if you're the kind of person that has a tendency to lean towards pessimism, you can say, and this is true because there's some of us that's out here that do. It's not, it's not, it just is what it is. Some of us do. Let's say if I'm a person that I seem to be a little pessimistic. What I'm going to do is one small step is I'm, a, I'm going to try to reframe situations, which means that when a person says something to me, instead of responding the way I always respond, I'm going to see how maybe I can respond a little different. That's a step. 
if I'm a person on a personal level that um, really, you know, doesn't have the healthiest habits, let's say, you can say, hey, um, one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take one area of my life that I know I need to work on to develop good habits, and I'm going to slowly start to do things differently. Slowly, you know, change my mindset, change my habits and things of that nature. You had your hand up, Dominic? Yeah, I was actually going to say, um, my brother is big into this. Um, he actually got my nephew, he's seven, into wrestling, uh, mainly because it's one of the only sports that when you fail, it's your fault and you can't <laughs> put the blame on somebody else. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, man. I never thought about it that way. Yeah, and, yeah, and golf is like that too. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, people's watching you. So yeah, so he's trying to train his son to take responsibility is what you're saying. Yeah. That's good. Okay. All right. So let's take a couple of minutes and think about the habit. I want everybody to write down, just you write it somewhere or type it somewhere. And what's one small step you can have to improve it? I'm going to give you about five minutes max because we got a few more things we want to share and I'm going to have you out here on time. So let's go ahead and do that for about, say, three to five minutes. It won't take too long. But you got to write down the habit because now we're going to give you a few other things that's going to be helpful. So go ahead and let me be quiet for three minutes. If you have any questions, type them in the chat feature.
All right, all right. All right. Just hang on. All right. So did you all like if you go on the um emojis, it says reactions and, 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 and see if and, and type in a thumbs up if you got what I was trying to communicate in that last session. I wanted you to write that habit down. And I really want to make sure that it was for you to take a look at the habit that you were trying to, because this is what tiny habits is all about. Remember, I only said one. I didn't say two, three, four, just one. Or if you want to go in the chat feature, did you type yours down? Or does anybody feel comfortable sharing it? You know, anybody feel comfortable sharing it? Sharing theirs and what they're playing with? Okay, go ahead, sir. Yep. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is just a habit I started recently. I started refing basketball and I'm new to it. So the one habit I do is I go to the games at least 30 minutes early and just watch the veteran refs and take notes and just see how they, their movement and see how that just to get a better look at like how they're managing the game. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you're, you're saying that's a good habit. That sounds like a good habit, right? Yeah. 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 So what do you think you can, how can you build on that? Like you, what, what do you think you can now do, go back and do as a result of that good habit? A good habit. Um, I, for me, I just, I've gotten, just doing that has got me way more confident and go when I do wrap yep. up the games, I've gotten to a point where mm -hmm. I'm just really comfortable out there. Like before it was funny, like the people would just like, they're like, you know, look at like a deer in the headlights. And then I have the same parents coming up to me. You're like, good job. You're just like, all right, <laughs> <Yeah>. thank you. <laughs> it's like, because it's, yeah. it's yeah. like first, the first game you were rip my head off. Now you're like, pat yeah. me on the back. Yeah. <laughs> and you know why that is? Because you improved. See yeah. that? I want everybody to get this. He improved. And what did he do? He improved. Please write this down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put it because that's really what you just did was powerful. And I want to make sure everybody gets this because this is what you did. You improve by bring, making a habit out of best practice. You saw somebody else succeeding, right? And so instead of this, and instead of like you said, um, you know, uh, you know, just like pointing fingers, like parent, you're wrong. Because <laughs> I'm a parent, I get it. You know, because <laughs> parents can be brutal at some of those sports events. Um, you say, how can I get better? That's a shift in neurological thinking. I could have kept doing what I was always doing. All right, or I can make a change. And that's always a good sign of, of a person that understands the importance of these small detailed things that we need to do in order to shift that to an outcome. All right, thank you so much for that. Anybody else want to share? Anybody else feel compelled to share? If not, we'll move on. We got a few more things to share here anyway. So I'll just, so okay, we'll let that one go. All right, so the key is keep the word to put, keep this word on, surf tiny. One small shift. You you know, I have a I have a lot of people I know that are successful, very successful in um um the um in their careers. And I find a lot of times the people successful in their careers are successful in business, because I mean I know people in both, it's they're always looking for ways to enhance the way they do things. They never they're never okay with the status quo. How do I get better? How do I improve the way I do things? So the thing with this habit that I'm trying to communicate is let's look at that for our own careers in life. What are one, what are little steps we can take to be better in our workforce space work, you know, to be better in our extracurricular type things like coaching, you know, a uh, refing. And that's what we're not trying to create here is what we call automatons. We're not trying to say be a robot, <laughs> but we're talking about just being just slight improvements. I've been speaking and training for 20 something years and I still read speaking and training books. <laughs> Because I'm always trying to get better, you know? I, mean, I had a speech back in Washington back in September. It didn't go as well as I would like. And I got some pretty positive negative feedback from that speech. But you know what I did? I took that information and I said, instead of getting upset, because I thought it was, personally, I felt like it was a good speech for me. <laughs> I took that information and I went back and I created a system to make sure that those things don't appear in any of my other presentations. So even when you get negative feedback about something, you can still grow and learn from it if it's perceived, if it's accepted as the right way. So let's look at the second part of this, and that's a systems approach. Now let's talk about this for just a moment. Goals are about results you want to achieve. 
Symptoms are about processes that lead you to those results. Don't ever forget that part right there. That is so important because most people will say, I want to achieve a goal. I want to achieve a goal. I want to achieve a goal. What I'm trying to get folks to do is understand you need to focus on the system. You know, I would put us all on the spot and I would say, um, have anyone ever tried to lose weight before? <laughs> you know, and I don't want to, don't answer. You don't have to. Because I think we all, my mentor used to say that, he used to joke and always say, man, I lost several thousand pounds in my lifetime. <laughs> and he would joke, the, point, the joke was, he said, we gain it back and lose it again. <laughs> so, so, uh, so that's one thing. But what you find is that people who have systems seem to do better. I have a friend in Delaware that's named, her name is Jen, Jen Easterday. Jen has six kids and you would look at her and think she didn't have one. Because she is so committed to her diet and her exercise. I mean, every she was she would always like exercise up to the time she was about to deliver. And then a month later, she back to working out again, <laughs> if that long. She committed to that system. And that's why now I believe at the age of 55, somewhere around there, she looked like she's 20 something. Because it's the system. So she has a routine, she has a pattern, she gets up. All right. So here's the thing. If you're having trouble changing your habits, the problem isn't you <laughs> or me. The problem is our systems. Bad habits repeat themselves repeatedly, not because you don't want to change, but because you have the wrong system for change. Please don't forget that. So it's not me and it's not you because we beat ourselves up a lot. Don't we? Hands up, thumbs up. You get it? We get it. We're so hard on ourselves. Why is it not like that? So the desire to change is there, but maybe the system. And that led him to having this quote. Write this quote down. You want this quote. It's powerful. You don't rise to the level of your goals. You fall to the level of your systems. So coach is going to say it like this. And please share this with your peers because this is good information. If you want to change your outcomes, change your systems. If what I'm doing is not working, create another system and try that one. So for instance, like I said, with uh, emotional intelligence, emotional intelligence helped me out a lot because I remember, I remember I told you, I used to have issues with anger and all that when I was a kid. And then I start realizing I want dream. I have dreams and goals in my life. I want to succeed. I want to do something. I can't get there with this. So I had to work on a system of communicating to people differently. I did. And, 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 and you know, and thank goodness that opened up tremendous doors. So we don't rise to the level of our goals. We fall to the level of our systems. All right. And um, so have you ever used a system for anything? And what was the outcome? All right, let me stop this here. We're not going to, you know, we will get to that. And then how can a systems approach assist you to adjusting habits that are formed? Have any of you ever developed, used a system? You can just put your hand up or of any type of system. It could be at work. It could be personal. Has anyone ever used a system before? Yes, no. Of any type. You know, it could be a health and exercise system. It could be a work-related system. Has anyone ever used a, okay, Debbie said yes. All right. How, did it help at all? Did, did it help? Did the system, based on, well, you, you don't have to go into details as to what it is, but did it, did it really help? Because there's a point I'm trying to, yeah, and you say, yes, it's helping. It's helping because when you agree, Debbie, if you, if you want to chime in on this, it's because it's created a pattern. Would you agree of the way that you do things? Yes, bing. that's what we're looking at. Yep. And that's when you start to see the outcomes. So my friends, in your job assignments, what are some areas that you need to think about? How do I have a system? What we did at uh, my company is we created, we wanted systems so to be in effect so much that we created continuity around client engagement, around community involvement, 
the continuity was even down to the way that we we, we uh, presented ourselves. You know, we 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 weren't overly business oriented, but we always had a good business professional look. We wanted that for our clients because we always talk to our clients about dress for success. And I started telling my staff, how are we going to tell them to dress for success and they don't see it? <laughs> we need to be a little bit of an example of what we expect. We talk to our clients about soft skills. I said, how are we going to talk to them about soft skills? And we're not doing it. And, you know, if we're going to do soft skills, maybe we want them to be. So it's those systems that we put together and stay the course with that produce the outcomes. Okay? And so... Um, so what you want to look at is if I have this habit, now what I want to do is take that habit and put a system. And you can use something as simple. I want to show you this. As simple as, I hope I got it in here. Yeah. Many of you have seen me do this before, talk about this. A journal. That's all. That's all. It's simple. Write down what it is you want to do. And then write about it. Oh, today I did okay. The next day, get up, write about it again. A paragraph, a sentence or two. Because now you're taking it from an idea to your mindset. Because why? You're monitoring it. You're measuring it. I'm progressing. And this acts as a reminder. Like, what I'm sharing with you today is only going to go as far as your application. That's all, that's all it can do. Training is going to only be as effective as me applying what I've learned. So if we're going to look at doing habits, we got to say, okay, how do I break habits? Well, I got to be consistent. I need accountability. I need to talk to people, things like that. Okay? So, so remember this, uh, the systems. We got to understand that these systems are important. Are there any questions? I want to make sure you got what I'm saying. You got, you got what I'm saying about systems? Does that make sense? Yeah. Good. Because... What I'm, what I'm realizing is, and this is something like with my training, because I've been reevaluating a lot of the work we're doing, and I'm really, I really want to see people apply these things. Like, I want to see, it's one thing to get it, but like, do something. Because I love, like, i tell you something, I, um, I train, you know, in Pennsylvania, we do, I'm, I'm actually in the process of a, something major maybe happening in PM, I, I don't know, I got to find out, but this could be a significant amount of training for a major organization in the state. I hope we get it, but... I love when I'm at the Pennsylvania Workforce Development Association's conference, which I speak at pretty much every year. And people walk up to me and say, coach, you know what I did? You did the training and this is what I did. And this is the outcome. It's like I just hug him. <laughs> this one guy, he was, I don't know where he's from, Scranton, I think somewhere. And we were talking, you know, about um, mindset with his, their group. And this big guy, he's like six, five, six, six, and big, big old guy. And I'm at my boo. And all of a sudden, I see this guy come with this smile on his face, walking real fast, and he's coming to give me a bear hug. <laughs> I said, well, I must have done something to get that hug. <laughs> he said, man, you have no idea. He said, that training that you did, man, that helped me in my work and my life. He said, I said, I got a better relationship with my wife. I said, you got a better relationship with your wife? Did I teach something about that? He said, no. <laughs> he said, but I went home with a new mindset. Because I felt like just going home and sitting in the chair and watching my games was being a good husband. And I realized my mindset was wrong. <laughs> I need to go home, give her a hug, let her know I love you and say, baby, how can I help you today? She said, she, she said she's loving me more than I've ever loved. I said, did I teach that? He said, no, but I got that from your message. <laughs> I said, I need to charge you for that, man. That's a lot of good information. <laughs> Those of you who know me, I get a little silly every now and then. But the point I'm making is he did something with it. You know, there's another lady, she's over in Philadelphia. We did the uh, self-care training. And at the Pennsylvania Workforce Conference, she comes up with me. She got this scowl on her face, right? <laughs> like, girl, I said, what do you want to do? And I remember her because we had just recently conducted their training. And uh, they loved it, though. It was, they loved that self-care training. It was really, it went well for them. And it was live physically at their location. And she came up to me. She said, Coach, you got me in trouble. <laughs> I said, what did I do? She said, you got me in trouble. I said, what did I do? She said, you talked about self-care and how the bedroom is meant for us to go to sleep. I said, yeah, <laughs> it is. She said, well, I, I went home that night and took the television set out of my bedroom. I said, I didn't tell you to do that. <laughs> she, she said, my husband said, put that TV back up there. I don't want some sports. And so she said, ah. she said, that guy gave us some good information. I'm, I'm, I want to do something with this. 
So she finally got him to compromise. He said, okay, we'll have it in here sometimes and then sometimes we won't. And, uh, and she smiled. She said, coach, I'm not in trouble. I just want to let you know what you said. I took to heart. She said, I'm better rested. She said, I go to bed at night. She said, I get my eight hours sleep. And she said, my work is going to always be there. I wake up the next day and get it done. You see, that's application. Please write this word down because we're going to come back in a few weeks and we got to finish this up. Write down the word execution, please. And put in the chat feature. Because I'm talking about habits. I want you all to get this, my friends. Because it's not just about work. It's not just about life. It's just about a mindset of freedom that you get when you do things the right way. Listen, I'm sitting here. I could be sitting on the other side of this camera with you because there's areas in my own life I'm constantly working on. Please don't think I'm perfect. People think that people that train are perfect. We're not perfect. We're human like everybody else. But what I want you to let you know, this is a work in progress. And so by having the systems, by making them tiny, you start to slowly see success. That's what I want you to get. So let us walk away and say, this guy gave this training. Please go back. I'm giving you notes. Execute. You're going to have this video. Look at it a couple times. Because this is an important habit. This is important for all of our lives. All of our lives. All right. So identity-based. The last thing I'm going to share. You must start believing new things about yourself to change the behavior for good. You need to build identity-based habits. Changing your beliefs isn't as nearly as hard as you might think. There are two steps. One, decide the type of person you want to be. And prove it to yourself with small wins. You're not proving this to me. You're not even proving it to your coworker or your client. Prove it to you. I like, you know, Dominic was saying how his, his uh, brother has a son in, 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 um, in the uh, in the uh, in the the wrestling, so he can learn to handle things, take responsibility. This is what this is saying, and this is not saying it in a negative way. What this is trying to say is see the value in who you are, and don't let and do the things you need to do to help this identity thing. Your identity emerges out of your habits. Please write that one down. If you don't write any of this down, please write that down. Your identity emerges out of your habits. Every action is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. That just bless me, bless me reading that to y'all. <laughs> because it can be it's easy to forget that. So those little things I do, they're votes. So that's why I said tiny. Because you may make a mistake, get up and try again. You, you may stumble, that's okay, I'm back up and again. You don't achieve outcomes, all right, in one big clean swoop. You achieve them by knowing this is who I want to be. And I'm doing this change in my neurological pathways. I shared so much with you today. And all these things because I want a particular outcome. And I'm going to tell you something. This is really important when it comes to success in our space and success beyond it. Okay? It's really important. Your identity emerges out of the, your habits. Every action is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. And that's what we want to focus on. So take about three minutes. What type of person do you want to be? How can you achieve this with small wins? Go ahead. Give me about three or four minutes and we're going to wrap this up. You, know, you don't have to share this. This is for you. What type of person, what type of employee do I want to be? What type of coworker do I want to be? What type of husband, wife, what do I want to be? And what are the small wins to get you there? Give you three minutes. All right. How do we do with that? Everybody feel pretty good? Yeah. Okay. Now, I know that's an unusual ending, but I wanted you to know that habits are steeped. If we can go back to this last slide. Your identity emerges out of your habits. Every action is a vote for the type of person you wish to become. So that was... I want to end on a personal note, not just career or anything like that. I just want us um, 
to understand this is much bigger than just general topic areas. This is about us as people. And like I said to you, as I'm sharing this with you, I'm pointing three fingers back to myself to make sure that I'm doing what I'm teaching because it takes work to do this stuff. But one small step at a time can make a huge, huge difference. All right. So you got that. You did that. You don't. OK, so what we're going to talk about next week, next the next time we get together is what's called the habit loop. Because what I want you to understand is this when we talk about this being neurological, it is neurological. And so we got to talk about things like the cue, which kind of keeps us going in that habit, the craving. Sometimes when we do it so long, it becomes like a craving to do it certain ways. The reward when we start changing and then our response that keeps us on point. That's what we're going to be talking about the next time. So make sure, make sure your peers that aren't didn't show, didn't show up this one, tell them about it. Because this is going to be, this will be a game changer. All right, it'll be a game changer. Because this won't only help us in our assignments, it'll help us in life. All right, so the next time we're going to talk about the habit loop. Just like that little uh, ride there, just keep going around. And I hate that ride too. I've been on that ride before. <laughs> that ride is, is, I don't like being upside down, but it up, be upside down on that thing. All right, around and around. And we've got the cue, the craving, the reward, and the response. You're going to, st next time we get together, you're going to recognize there's things that trigger habits. There's things that happen that actually trigger them. And then we're going to talk about how did that become a craving for it, whatever it may be, reward and response. How can we fix that? So that's it. I'm going to put my um, email in the chat feature. And um, if you need to contact me, that's how you can contact me. Uh, if you have any questions or if you want to debrief, you know what I mean? If you, if you want to debrief, we can definitely look at doing that. Um, I also want to do this. But some of y'all, a lot of y'all don't know who I am. I know it's the first time coming on. Let me do this real quick. While I'm doing this, could you type in the chat feature what you're going to walk away with? Because we do have an assignment I'm going to give you here in just a second. But what did you walk away with before we go? And this is my website for those who want more information on who I am and what I do. Okay. All right. Just write in the chat feature one thing that you're going to do and work on. One habit you're going to focus in on. You don't, you don't have to put a chat feature. I'm talking about the one thing you learned today. I'm sorry. Learn today in the chat feature. Okay. And then you do have a homework assignment I'm going to give to you in just a moment. What did you learn today? And my, my hope of doing these sessions for you all, that is valuable. You know, I don't, I know, I know you take time for your precious work and I don't, you know, I'm big on, Hey man, I want this to be, I want this to work for you. I don't, I thank you. We had a few new faces here today. It's so good to see you all. Hope you'll come back next time because we're going to break this down a little bit more. And it, you, trust me, if you apply these principles, it's going to work. It'll work. All right. So in the chat feature, just a few of you, if you want to just tell us, you know, what did, what did you walk away with today? What did you walk away with today? All right. Because we got to walk away with something. And as you're, okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you, Lila. Habits develop multiple ways of thinking and addressing situations in a different manner. Very good. Absolutely. Yep. Anyone else? You must take responsibility for your failures to become successful. Yes, to an extent. What I mean by that is, remember, remember when we said in a, one part there that your habits aren't necessarily your fault. It's your, it's your systems. You know what I mean? So I get what's being said there. There is because we did talk about that briefly with the, uh, the, the, the with the with the wrestling. There's yes with that as far as yes, I need to own it. But then sometimes we also need to recognize that I'm only doing this because I'm habitually wired to do it. You know, so we need to work on that as well. All right, anybody else? Love to, yep. Yeah. Mm. Yep. And so homework that we'll talk about a little bit the next session, think about one habit you would change and think about a simple system. What system can I put in there, you know, in order to improve by 1%? Got it, thank you, got that. That's your homework assignment. And when we come together for the next session, which I believe is around the 22nd, somewhere around there, I can't remember uh, what, it, what date that's on. Um, you know, we'll kind of do a little more coaching around those that habit loop. And so that we can kind of end these series of trainings with something that's going to be really valuable for you in your position. So 
So make sure you take that homework down. And what I also would like to hopefully see you do, I said put my email address in there. In about a week or so, just email me and let me know how you're doing. You know, how's it going? Um, do you feel like you're still stuck or do you feel like you need more information? Because I'm I'm not here just for these individual sessions. I always tell people, I, you can reach out to me anytime beyond these. Not many people have take me up on it, but, you know, you can reach out to me beyond these. So that's it. Um, if there are no questions, thank you all so much. I appreciate your efforts and time today. And by th show a thumbs up, how many of you got something out of the day? Did today make sense? Did, was it, did it make sense today? Yeah, some of y'all gonna go change some of those habits, get those beautiful outcomes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look at all of you. Oh, wow, look at all of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And uh, I'll tell you this, I got a lot of it. <laughs> and so as I'm teaching you, I'm gonna go back and work some things myself because there's some areas of my own life I need to work on. So that's all I have to say. Um, Lucia, is there anything that you need to say? Are we good? Yeah, we're good. We're good. Okay. All right. She coordinates all these. I just want to make sure. All right. Thank you for your help too in doing this. So bye everybody. Have a great week. Bye. Weekend. Weekend. Thank okay. you, Coach. Bye-bye. Yep.